think that, you know, sleep is something that we really underestimate as far as how much an effect that has for people with Parkinson's. Because we know that a good number of people with Parkinson's, and close to 80%, and I think it's almost 100% of people, have difficulty with sleeping uh, with Parkinson's disease. And I can look out in this big group of people, and I would bet at least half the people here had, had some difficulty with sleeping last night, and half of you because you have Parkinson's, and the other half is because you slept with somebody with Parkinson's. So sometimes that can be kind of disruptive as well. So one of the things that when I see somebody in the clinic, one of the things I always ask them is, what's your sleep like? And we have a questionnaire, and people ask, sleep's good, sleep's bad. And what I've learned over the years, especially when you're dealing with men, is you can't just ask a yes, no question. We have to ask, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up? Because a lot of times, if you ask people how their sleep is, they'll say, fine, it's OK. But going to bed at 10 o'clock, waking up at 3 or 4, and not being able to go back to sleep is not good sleep. Going to bed at 10, waking up at 6, and waking up five or six times during the night is not good sleep. So I've learned to be very, a little bit more specific as far as asking uh, questions for people. And it's kind of interesting, uh, the difference between men and women asking these questions, because women are much more likely to tell me if they have some difficulty with sleep. And in fact, there was a study that came out a couple of weeks ago in which they, at, they actually measured older people's sleep, men and women, and they found that women sleep 15 minutes more per night than men do. Yet if women will talk about their sleep problems much more than men. And I think that part of that reason is that to engage uh, a man about some of the problems he's having in regards to Parkinson's disease, you have to relate it to sports. If it's got something to do with sports, then they'll talk about it. If the Parkinson's is affecting their golf game, then we'll talk about it. Bowling, we'll talk about it. So I think you have to ask the, the specific questions. And uh, that with sleep, is that sleep uh, is a very important problem for people with Parkinson's, and it's a fairly common problem. And why it occurs is probably a number of different reasons. There are some neurochemical changes that occur within the brain that affects our ability to sleep. Uh, also, some of the medications that we use to treat Parkinson's can cause problems with sleeping difficulties. Mood disturbance, uh, as far as becoming anxious or worried about things, also can affect sleep. And then also, as we grow older, there is change in our circadian rhythm, is that the way that we sleep is different, and that usually we go to bed earlier, wake up earlier, and so some of these changes all can contribute to problems with sleep difficulties for people with Parkinson's. And again, I think it's very important that we address these issues uh, for people with Parkinson's because you really can't feel well during the day. You know, I think this is a great program as far as talking about exercise, medications, all these different types of treatments, but if you're not sleeping well at night, it's all for naught uh, as far as being able to live an active and a good lifestyle. Now, there are three major problems that we have with sleep for people with Parkinson's, and number one is something we call sleep maintenance insomnia. And what that means is that it's hard to stay asleep at night or you wake up early in the morning. Most people with Parkinson's have not, don't have much problem as far as falling asleep, but it's being able to stay asleep during the nighttime that causes the problems. You know, and sometimes when we talk to people about sleep problems, you always think, well, I can fall asleep fine, so my sleep must be okay. But it's these awakenings during the night that can cause the problems. The awakenings that happen during the night are almost a normal part of sleep. Is if we look at somebody's sleep during the night, we all wake up maybe every hour, hour and a half or so, uh, and then usually what we do is we roll over and go back to sleep. Waking up and staying awake is not usually not part of the sleep. And so when that happens, especially for a person with Parkinson's, then it can cause some difficulties. And some things, what happened during the night is that maybe because of the problems with some of the stiffness. As the medications have worn off during the night, people notice a little bit more stiff. They may have some problems with the tremors reemerge and that causes some difficulty or symptoms in that way. So that's one of the things that may cause a person to wake up uh, during the nighttime. The treatment for that can be adding medications at bedtime that may be a little bit longer acting. Uh, and sometimes a controlled release form of levodopa can help. Uh, but we have to be careful with sleep medica or Parkinson's medications at bedtime because it's kind of a two-edged sword. Sometimes the medications help us sleep better. Sometimes it actually can make sleep worse. It can cause some problems with vivid dreams and such. So that we have to be a little bit careful with just adjusting the Parkinson's medications themselves. Other times we'll use sleep medic types of medications to help get a person to sleep well at night. And you know, we try to avoid using medications. And medications can be very helpful, but also we have to be careful we don't overutilize medications. But I always talk to people as they worry about having to take medications and becoming addicted to sleep medications. I say, you know, you have reasons why your sleeping is not good at night. You have Parkinson's, 
And as long as we can use something that's not going to give you side effects and make you sleep better, it will improve your life. So the important aspects of, of treatment of this type of problem is to be able to get a person to sleep well at night. And I usually tell people with Parkinson's what our goal is, is to have you go to bed, say, at 10, and be able to sleep for about six hours uninterrupted. Get up to use the bathroom, and then maybe fall asleep again for another hour or so after that, and then also take, perhaps take naps during the day. And I think that if we, we try to get more than that, then sometimes we end up over-medicating people. So I think sometimes it's unrealistic for us to expect that a person should go to bed at 10 and wake up at 6 and, um, and be able to sleep all that, you know, that time at night. And you know, to a certain extent, that that's not physiologic. That's not what our bodies were set up to do. If we look at our body physiologically, there's basically two sleepy times for us. 2 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's naturally sleeping times. And so actually, if we look, listen to what our body t tells us, is that we actually would be taking a nap uh, in the afternoon for maybe a half hour, an hour or so, because that's what our body wants us to do. So when you're at your 2 o'clock symposium this afternoon, I give you permission to take a nap, because <laughs> you're only paying attention to what your body tells you to do. This, this whole idea about early to bed, early to rise, eight hours of sleep at night should be good, is just all a, um, some propaganda propagated by the Industrial Revolution. And basically what it did is, before people live in rural areas, is they used to go, go out, work in the fields, come home, eat lunch, take a nap for a half hour, and then go back to work. Well, that doesn't work in factories. And so to increase production in factories, we came up with this myth of you have to sleep eight hours at night and that should be good enough. But that's not physiologic. And so a lot of times if you are having problems with sleeping at nighttime, because sometimes people worry about that, not being able to sleep the full eight hours. So you know, it's hard to be able to do that sometimes as we get older. So splitting your sleep time up is a per perfectly acceptable way to do that. Now the second problem that affects people with Parkinson's and their bed partners is sleep talking, sleep walking at night. Fairly common problem, people will talk in their sleep. There's sometimes people will get up and act out their dreams at night, something we call the REM behavior disorder. And REM stands for rapid eye movement sleep, which is dreaming sleep. And our sleep is split up into two parts. Dreaming sleep, which makes up about 25% of the night, and non-REM sleep or non-dreaming sleep. And what happens during dreaming sleep is that our brains are active because we're having a dream, but our bodies are paralyzed and we're set up that way so we don't act out our dreams. But in Parkinson's, is that sometimes there's a mismatch with that, and so people end up doing things at night, sometimes sleepwalking, moving out of bed, lurching around or moving, uh, that can occur during REM sleep. So that's something that happens fairly frequently. Now, what do we do about that? Um, and that kind of depends. Sometimes when there is this sleep interruption at night, it may be something as simple as sleep talking or movements, that can cause a person to be tired or sleepy during the day because it causes some sleep interruption and even though you may not remember waking up, it's causing some arousals to occur. So if you have this problem and if you, um, and if you have tiredness during the day, then we should consider treating that problem. The second aspect would be is that if you wake up during the night and you have a hard time going back to sleep, then we should treat it. And sometimes, again, changing the Parkinson's medications can help. Sometimes using specific medications to help uh, get the sleep better at night. Some sleeping types of medications can also be effective. Now, if the situation is that you're talking in your sleep at night and your husband or wife is bugged by it, but you feel your sleep's okay and you feel good during the day, then that's what we tell you to do the last thing is that you have separate bedrooms or use earplugs. Because one of the things that's important to remember about Parkinson's is this, is we always use medications to make you feel better. You shouldn't take medicines to make your husband or wife feel better with your sleeping, because you're the one who's going to have the side effects. So it's an important thing to remember is that in Parkinson's, as much with, with sleep, what we do is we use medications to make you feel better. If you don't feel better, we don't use them, because you just end up with difficulties with, with side effects. Now the third problem is daytime sleepiness or tiredness, which is a common problem again for people with Parkinson's. And that can be f because sleep is disturbed at night. So our evaluation with that usually is we take a look and see if there are some sleep problems that a person will have at night and, uh, and try to make their sleep better at night, see if that helps reduce the problems with daytime sleepiness. Uh, the second problem can be medication effects, is that the medicines that we use to treat Parkinson's 
can cause problems with sleepiness or, or tiredness. And the medicines that are more likely to do that are the dopamine agonist medications like Meripex, Ropinamol, Requip, and sometimes Levodopa will too. And so if you're having problems with this somnolence during the daytime, which usually occurs about an hour or so after a person takes the medication, then we need, need to change the medications to find something that's going to be a little, a little bit better uh, for you. Uh, because again, these medications are, do very well for people with Parkinson's and we're there to make you feel better, but we have to be careful we don't end up putting you on medications that actually makes some aspects of your life uh, not so good. Other problems with sleep is lack of daytime activity. Like it's very easy to kind of sit around, watch television, and so there's some difficulties with that. So, because if you're active and moving during the day, you're less likely to become sleepy. Even if you have some problems with sleeping, it's because of medications. And it's going to make you f then sleep better at night, which overall makes you feel better. Now, so, some of the other aspects of sleep problems that we can, people can experience that are not specific to uh, just um, uh, Parkinson's disease can be sleep apnea, uh, which fairly common problem People snore at night, and you know, pretty much everybody snores at night, they drink a couple beers. Snoring's important is that if you snore in all positions, back and side, someone hears you stop breathing at night, uh, you have problems with dry throat or sore throat, and you have problems uh, with being tired or sleepy during the day, then that's significant for sleep apnea. And people with Parkinson's, their instance of sleep apnea is probably about the same as the general population, maybe a little bit higher. It generally tends to be not quite as severe as we see in, sometimes in younger people with having sleep apnea, and there's treatments that we can do for that. Second problem is restless leg syndrome, uh, which is a, a condition that affects not only people with Parkinson's, but the general population. There may be a little bit higher incidence in people with Parkinson's disease, and this is treated with Parkinson's medications. And so sometimes, what this is basically is a sensation of uncomfortable sensation that occurs through the legs at night, you feel like you have to get up and move around, and movement generally makes that better. Sometimes you may notice that if we adjust your Parkinson's medication, especially if we reduce a person's um, Meripex, requip, we reduce the dose down, sometimes there will be a kind of a rebound effect from that. Now, the things that you can do to help to remember about sleep, some practical things, is the first thing to remember is that sleep is important. Sleep is important to make us feel good during the day. You, know, you can do all the exercising you want, you can take all the drugs you want. If you're not sleeping well at night, you're not going to do well during the day. And when I see someone in the office and they're not sleeping well, before I make any other medication change or recommend any other type of therapy, we always do something to try to make the sleep better. And you, most of the time we can get sleep better. I mean, sometimes it is difficult, uh, but most of the time we can get sleep better. You need eight hours of sleep per day, period. And this whole idea about taking power naps, and, you know, and I get sick of hearing about Thomas Edison who slept 15 minutes every two years, or whatever that ridiculous <laughs> thing is. That's just malarkey, is that you need eight hours of sleep per day. Some people need seven, some people need nine. But I think that one of the things that I look back is that, you know, because there is different requirements, is that if you have Parkinson's, I always ask people, say, well, what was your sleep like 10 years ago, five years ago? And if you were sleeping well then, and then with Parkinson's, the sleep is not so good, we should be able to make you, to sleep, make you sleep well again, because sometimes the Parkinson's can be results of that. And then also, as mentioned before, is you don't need to get all of your sleep at, uh, at night. As we have normally sleepy times in the afternoon, it's perfectly acceptable to take a nap, and perhaps it's pr preferable to take a nap half hour, an hour in the afternoon. You usually don't want to sleep longer than that, because that sometimes can then interfere with your sleep cycle at night. And so we usually recommend people take half hour, hour naps, which can make uh, them feel better. Uh, daytime activity, as we mentioned, as far as the big loud programs, exercise programs, things that you do during the daytime to make yourself more awake, more alert, is going to help your sleep at night. And then also another important point is that your bladder doesn't know what time it is. And I hear this all the time, is I have to get up at night because I have to urinate. And so usually when somebody says to me, you know, I'm up four or five times at night, to urinate, I say, well, how many times do you use, use the bathroom during the day? Because if you're up four or five times at night, you should be using the bathroom eight to ten times during the day. And a lot of times, it's more, this may be more of a sleep problem than a bladder problem. And we do produce a little bit more urine at night, so some, we do have more urine that is there. But if you're waking up a lot, at, urinating a lot at night, you're, and you're not urinating a lot during the day, it's because your sleep is disturbed. It's because you're waking up during these normal times of the hour, an hour and a half, 
you're aroused for some reason and you think, I have to use the bathroom and use the bathroom. So the important thing is that don't, uh, the bladder doesn't know what time it is. Now as far as sleep hygiene, uh, unfortunately the most important aspect of sleep hygiene is to be boring. Is to do the same thing the same time every day. You go to bed at the same time, you wake up at the same time. And if you can't do that, then usually a wake-up time is perhaps the most important trigger for us as far as help to keep us on a regular sleep uh, schedule. Caffeine, even after noon, can cause problems with sleeping. As we grow older, we have more difficulty metabolizing caffeine, so I always help people no caffeine after a noon. Drinking at bedtime, not a good idea. Alcohol will put you to sleep, but then as the alcohol levels drop, adrenaline levels go up and it disturbs the later part of the evening. So people will drink alcohol to help make themselves fall asleep, but it will cause sleep disturbance later on. And that's one of the things we, reasons we think people have so much problem with hangovers is because people just get smashed, they go to bed, their sleep's crappy, and they feel worse the next day. And the most important thing as far as if you're having problems at sleep at night is don't look at the clock at night. Because all it does is irritate you. You look at the clock, <laughs> it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I had the same experience today. I had problems with sleep too. I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning because of the dogs, basically, and the closed door is a long story. But when you look at the clock, it makes you anxious. And then what happens when we look at people in the sleep laboratory, actually, if they're, if they're up at 3, people, most people fall back to sleep again. And then you wake up at 4, and you think, well, I've been awake for a whole hour. Most of the time, you've fallen back to sleep. So good advice is not to look at the clock at night, and that will help to reduce some of the anxiety about sleeping. So in closing, the thing to emphasize is that sleep's important. I think that six hours of night of inter interrupted sleep, maybe another hour of sleep, and then a nap during the day will make a world of difference in helping to make you feel better with the Parkinson's. Thank you.